In this lecture, we are going to talk about encoder decoder models and attention mechanisms. So, so this is a very interesting lecture, at least interesting to me, because uh, this is where we put all these pieces that we have learned so far. Right? We have learned three types of networks: uh, feed-forward networks, recurrent neural networks, and convolutional neural networks. And we have seen independent applications of each of these: word to vec uh, and image classification, and so on. Now, today, what we are going to see is how do we do different combinations of these networks and come up with a wide range of applications right? apply them to a wide range of applications. Okay? So, let me start by an introduction to encoder decoder models and then we do various applications of encoder decoder models. So, what we are going to do is uh, we will start by revisiting the problem of language modeling. So, the problem of language modeling was that you are given some t minus 1 words or characters and you want to predict the tth word or character right. This is like autocomplete uh, in short right uh, whenever you are typing something you have typed four words you want to predict the fifth word or you have typed four characters and you want to predict the fifth character. Okay? So, more formally this is what we are interested in. How many of you get this equation or uh, this uh, expression? Okay. So, we are given a sequence of t minus 1 words and we want to find out what the value of y would be at time step t and we want to find out that value which maximizes this probability. That is what this argmax equation means. And now we will try to see how to model this using a RNN. So, let us see. Uh, we are going to start with go that is that we want to start generating a sentence and then we will produce the first word which is i. Okay? And what is it that we are predicting at this point? What is the network supposed to predict? What is the output supposed to predict actually? It is supposed to predict a dash over the vocabulary a probability distribution over the vocabulary. right? So, this is what is happening. Uh, we will of course, come back to this on the next few slides, but you have say words w 1, w 2 up to w v in your vocabulary. At every time step you want to find a distribution over these words and then pick the word which had the maximum probability at that time step. right? That is exactly what this quantity is. Okay? That is what we want the R n into model. And then you want to keep doing this till we reach the end of the sentence. Okay? So, that is the language modeling problem and as we had made a case for it earlier, the word produced at time step t depends on a few previous words. How does the recurrent neural network en ensure that? At any time step I am going to give it only one word as the input. So, how does it ensure that it depends on all the previous words also through the recurrent connections and the gate uh, and the, sorry not the gate the state s t. Okay? So, we will see this of course, in more detail and we will write down the model equations and what is happening. Uh, so, we are interested in this quantity which is the probability of the word at the time at the tth time step where this j belongs to a vocabulary v and see you have a vocabulary of 10 k words or 20 k words for English. Uh, it is actually much higher, but say you are considering only 10 k to 20 k words. Then you want to predict a distribution over this vocabulary. So, using an RNN what you are going to do at the output layer is the following. Is this correct? How many of you understand this equation? Not many, why? What does this equation compute? First of all, softmax. Softmax means probability distribution. Okay? What does it take as input at every time step? The state. right? What does it do with the state? A linear transformation right? and then a bias. Okay? So, what is this quantity? Scalar vector matrix, vector of size, Vocabulary. What is the gth element of the jth element of that? The probability of the jth word. Right? So, I just have to explain it in that many words. Everyone gets it now? Everyone gets it? If you do not get it, you will not understand the rest of the lecture. I am very serious. Everyone gets it? Okay. Uh, so, in other words, what we do is this entire y1 to yt minus 1, which we were conditioning on, we are just using st as a surrogate for that. And that is fair because st has actually captured all the previous information that we had. So, we are just using st as the state which captures everything that has happened so far. So, that is actually how we are modeling this. Okay? And the recurrent connections ensure that st captures everything which has happened so far. So, now let us look at the five things that we have in a typical supervised machine learning setup which are those data, model, parameters, objective function, very good. Okay? Hey, so, someone said objective function and then loss function, learning algorithm. right? Okay. So, what is the model here? You know what you are trying to model, 
which is a probability distribution. What is the actual, so your y is a probability distribution and your x is the input given to you. Can you tell me what and we have always said, always said in this course that whatever be the y, whatever be the x, we are interested in this function x, uh, sorry function f and we should be actually explicitly be able to write this function. So what is the function here? Can you actually write down the set of equations? Just think of what the output is, how we are going to reach the output given this network, what is yt going to be, what is the equation for yt and then try to go back all the way back to xt. So yt depends on something, that something might depend on xt, so how do you go all the way back, right? That is the thing which I expect you to do, okay. How many if you get it now? Please raise your hands, okay. So let us see. At every time step, what am I interested in predicting? A probability distribution. That means I will have to compute which function? Softmax, okay. So the green vector is what I am going to focus on. So what is the equation for the green vector? Is this fine? Okay. Now what does this contain apart from the parameters st? How do I get st? Is it fine? You can write, now you have written this output y as a function of x because x appears here or rather yt as a function of xt. Is it, I mean it is straightforward, right? Once I show you the answer it should be. How many if you get it now? Please raise your hands high up above, okay. What are the parameters? B and C, right? So these are the parameters. Uh, what is the objective function? Cross entropy or a dash of cross entropies, sum of cross entropies, right? So the loss is going to be over all the time steps. At every time step, it is the cross entropy loss, right? Everyone gets this? Okay. What is the learning algorithm? Back propagation through time, okay? Fine. So that is what it is going to be, right? Everyone is clear? So you can see that we have written the final output as a function of the input, right? And this is end to end trainable. That means the gradients can flow modulo this vanishing exploding, exploding gradient problem and we have a way of handling that we can replace RNS by LSTMs and so on, right. So that is what it is. Now this, just make sure you understand this properly so that we are going to do various instantiations of this for different problems, okay. Now here is one question, uh, we all smartly wrote this xt, but what is the input at every time step? When I am predicting home, the input was at, but how did I get at? That is what I dash at the previous time step, predicted at the previous time step, right? So this is what the input looks like. So at time step 1, I predicted i as the output. At the next time step, I am going to feed that as the input. Does it make sense, right? So see if you are doing autocomplete, you would select that, okay, I am fine with the word i at this time step. So it is going to take that as the input and then try to predict the next word, right? That is what exactly is happening here. And now you have predicted am, at the next time step you are going to feed am as the input and continue this chain throughout, okay. So the input at every time step is going to be the word that you have predicted at the previous time step and I am just going to represent it by a one hot vector, right. It is the index of the jth word, only that would be hot, everything else would be zero and all of you are fine with this. No, so at training time, this is the inference time. At training time you will have the real inputs. No, that is at inference time. At training time you will just use the true, because at training time you know what the input said, right? You know the true sentence, you have the Wikipedia sentence, right? And you know what the true sentence is going to be. What I am talking about, how will you generate it at test time? At training time you know all these things, right? No, but at training time how will you do that? You will know what the next input is, right? Right? Okay. So now, okay, so I said that the input is going to be a one hot vector. Is everyone fine with that? One hot vectors are okay. What else could you use? The word representation for that, right? So assume that you have already done the word to vec assignment and you have computed all the word representations and you have them with you now. Now instead of feeding the one hot representation of the input, you can just feed the word representation of the input. Does that make sense? One hot representation is just one of the many representations possible for the word. So why just do that? You could do SVD, you could do one word vec or whatever you want, right? So that is in practice what we will feed is the word to wake representation. So everyone gets this, what is happening at every time step, okay? Now one more thing that you need to notice that S0 which is the input at time step 1, the previous, so S1 minus 1. So that we do not know what it is, so we just keep it as a parameter. We say that S0 is also a weight vector and we are going to learn it along with all the other parameters in the network, 
does that make sense because you don't know what s0 means the semantics of it is not clear like what was generated at the zero time step we don't really know right so we'll just make it a learnable parameter and that would be trained along with all the other parameters of the network so before we move on what we are going to do is we're going to see a very compact representations for rnns gru's and lstms so remember rnn is the following equation rn is defined by the following equation the st is a recursive function of st minus 1 and xt right so i'm just going to write it as that st is equal to rnn of st minus 1 comma xt instead of writing all these parameters and sigmoids and all that i'm just going to write it compactly as this now this is what what is this gru so how am i going to write it as gru of st minus 1 comma xt what is this lstm how am i going to write it lstm of then the output of the lstm is both ht minus 1 and st minus 1 right fine so in some sometimes i'll just say st sometimes i'll say both ht minus ht and st as per whatever i need right so this is i'm not going to write these equations and parameters again i'll just say that lstm of this assume that's a function which does uh, this calculation and gives you back okay okay so so far what we have done is we have seen how to model the conditional probability distribution given the previous t minus 1 words now let me give you a different uh, application right uh, what if we want to generate a sentence given an image so this is what i'm interested in doing i'm given an image and i want to generate a sentence can you just think of it formally what is it that you want to do so we saw that in this case formally we were interested in this conditional distribution in this case what is it that we are formally interested in if i were to write it as something formal what would i write it as okay i'll give you a hint what kind of a distribution is this a conditional distribution right given the previous sequences a uh, previous sequence of words generate the tth word now in this situation can you state it in similar words given the image generate the sentence or given the image and the description that i have generated so far because i want to write the description one word at a time given the image and the description that i have written so far generate the next word in the image so now what kind of a conditional distribution is that p of yt given y1 to t minus 1 comma image does that make sense everyone gets that okay so what uh, so this is what we want right so here now we are interested in this quantity as opposed to this quantity does that make sense okay and this is again a conditional distribution so earlier how did we model this we just modeled it as the following we said that the whole context of y1 to yt minus 1 is just contained in that blue vector which is st right so remove this variables and replace it by a vector does that make sense okay now you have the image also so how are you going to model this so what are you going to write on the right hand side okay let me give you a hint we all agreed that this is the quantity that we are interested in right we also agreed that the following is fine replacing y1 to t minus 1 by st is fine now what about the image what do you mean by objects in the image you will supply the words which are there the object names that may man okay fine that's fair enough we want to make it more abstract more neural so what you are saying is that whatever information is contained in the image should be passed here whatever information is contained in the image should be passed here how do you what's the way that we have learned of computing the information in the image a dash neural network a feed forward neural network convolutional neural network okay so but what from a convolutional neural network how many representations does a convolutional neural network learn how many does a vgg network learn vgg 16 the last layer is a softmax layer 15 right so which one will you give now one before the last one that's called the dash layer dash dash layer fully dash layer fully connected layer okay at least your language model works fine okay so that's the fully connected layer remember that all the layers in the convolutional neural network learn an abstract representation of the image and as she was trying to say that this abstract representation contains or at least you believe it contains all the information that is there in the original image 
just as st contains all the information that was there in the sequence y1 to t minus 1. This abstract representation that we will get from a CNN contains all the representation, all the information that is there in the image. We all believe that. Okay? And we also believe that any of these representations is fine. In practice, the convention is to use the fully connected layer that is called as FC7, the seventh fully connected layer. right? And it is 7 because you also start the numbering from the convolution layer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then the seventh layer. Okay? So that is what you will take. Okay? So does this make sense? And it is a very simple extension from what we were doing earlier. This is what I have circled is what we were doing earlier, right? where we only had ST. Now I am saying is just as you believe that ST encodes all the information in the previous sequence, I am just asking you to stretch that a bit more and say that FC7 of the image contains all the information that was there in the image. Is that fine? Okay. Okay. But still there are some issues and there are other ways of making this conditional on FC7. In particular, what you could have done as she was trying to suggest initially is that maybe you have a vocabulary of all the objects that are possible in your image. Right? So maybe in your image there is man, woman, there is flying disk, frisbee or there is dog, cat and all these things. Right? So you do an object detection first, get out all the objects which are there and then make the distribution conditional on these objects. Right? So you can say that I will allow for 10 words to describe the image. So there word, word, word 1 is equal to man because I have detected the object man in the image. Word 2 is equal to frisbee because I have detected the object frisbee in the image and so on. So that is another way of doing it. Okay, so I just want to make it clear that there are different ways of making the conditional distribution conditional on the image itself. We are choosing to make it conditional on FC7 of I. Right? That is the neural way of doing it. Okay. So let us see two such options. The first thing that we could do is we could set S0 to FC7 of the image. What is S0? The first thing that was passed to the language model. Okay? So remember we had this go symbol and we had this S0 which was mysterious, we did not know how it comes. But now we know it that S0 could just be the image. That is what my starting point is. So take this image and now start generating the representations, the, the generating the description. Does that make sense? Okay? So this is what the network looks like. So what he is saying is that these things are of dimension D. The CNN's output was say of dimension 4096. So this has to be converted to size D, right? That means what will you, how will you do that? You have a 4096 dimensional vector and you want to convert it to a D dimensional vector. W belonging to 4096 plus D. Fine. In general, any two vectors, if you want to make them compatible, this is what you will do. You will project so that they are of the same dimensions. X0 would be the Go symbol. So the Go is a special word in your vocabulary which says, okay, start generating the sentence. Right? So whatever vocabulary is, you will add two special words to it. One is Go and the other is stop. So whenever you generate stop, you stop generating after that. Fine? Okay. What is the other way of... So here now what happens is, so this is what is happening technically and that is why, that is what I want you to understand. This now S1 depends on S0. Okay? What we were interested in is the following that yt should be conditional on y1 to t minus 1 comma image. Okay? We have made sure that i is S0 and this quantity is st. Is that fine? So now since the first time step depended on the image, all subsequent time steps will depend on the image. Is that okay? Right? What is the other way of doing this? What I mean, this looks slightly inefficient. What is the other option that you could have used? Just feed the image at every time step. So that is the one constant thing that this is the image. Now whatever you have generated so far, consider that but in that addition to that also consider the image. So what would the diagram look like? Just passing the input to every stage of the decoder. Okay? I have already started using terminology which I have not introduced but I will just introduce it shortly. So let us look at what the full architecture looks like. We have something known as the encoder which takes your input, encodes it and gives you a representation. Right? Then you have something known as a decoder because given this input, you want to decode what the output is. Right? So remember general terminology would be whatever input is given to you, you want to encode it and whatever is the output that needs to be decoded. Right? So you could think of it that this is the image, I am trying to decode the description from there. Is that fine? Okay. And then you have an RNN which is used to decode the sentence from this input. So such architectures are known as encoder-decoder architectures. 
okay, and these have become extremely popular and we will see why they are so popular and why they have led to the popularity of deep learning in general. Okay. So, everyone understands this diagram, anyone who does not see a problem with this diagram, there is actually no problem, but I want you I, I want you to see beyond the diagram and to look at the equations. What do I mean by that? What do I have here as the input? What is my x? So, this, this looks fine, I have taken one box and connected it to another box and everything is fine, right. But that is not what I am interested in. What am I interested in? Can you write the input as a fun the output as a function of the input in this case? Is it possible to do that? So, that is what we need to make sure that we are able to do, right. So, we will look at various applications. So, I have just left it cryptically here, but I am going to come back to it. So, I just the emphasis is that look beyond the diagram. The diagram looks very nice. I hope it does thanks to the TAs, but it does. And, uh, but we need to understand what is the what is the set of equations being conveyed through this diagram, right. What is the function that we are trying to learn? We are going to write y as a function of x. Are we able to write that function? Because now we have suddenly thrown in a convolutional neural network. At some place we have a recurrent neural network. Then we have the feed forward layer at the output, which is the green vectors. So, how does all this combine together, right? <laughs>